Latinem, Nem Blockchain en español para ti. Edición especial. Hola Latinoamérica, bienvenidos a esta emisión especial acerca de casos de uso que tenemos para ustedes en Latinem, por supuesto, presentados gracias a la Fundación NEM. Mi nombre es Alexis Trujillo. Hoy corresponde un tema muy especial. Vamos a hablar acerca de 88i. 88i es una app brasilera que usa la blockchain de NEM como método para garantizar cobertura en en cuanto a seguros para los más necesitados y por supuesto con la perspectiva de blockchain eso con la transparencia que puede garantizar la mejor blockchain la blockchain de NEM vamos a estar viendo una entrevista que nos grabó en exclusiva acá a Latinem Rodrigo Ventura Rodrigo es el CEO de 88 y es quien más detalles nos va a dar acerca de esta app disfruten de la entrevista 88i es una aplicación que ofrece una alternativa en contratación, protección y asistencias en pólizas de seguro edificada bajo la blockchain de NEM en Brasil. La plataforma digital de servicios afirma que podrá atender los pedidos de clientes naturales y jurídicos con un sistema transparente y rápido y eficiente en cuanto a los bienes y servicios que se aseguren bajo este sistema, el cual operará con pólizas de seguro pagadas y ejecutadas con criptomonedas podrá extender pólizas de seguro para siniestros tradicionales y microseguros, una modalidad específicamente dirigida para personas de bajos recursos que no pueden acceder a este tipo de servicios financieros, dado los altos costos de esta industria. Como dijimos al principio, pudimos grabar una conversación con Rodrigo Ventura, CEO y fundador de 88i. Tiene tanto experiencia en el área de seguros como en su aplicación en el mercado, además de haber aplicado con éxito el concepto de transparencia de blockchain a la venta de seguros. Hi there, how are you? It's a pleasure being here. Um, 88 is about reinventing insurance. We are reinventing insurance, um, uh, focusing in the client for for um, uh, the insurance industry is focusing in the distribution channels not in the client for the last 200 years the experience of buying insurance it's awful it's bureaucratic time consuming full of paper um, so bureaucracies for everywhere and uh, we are um, uh, focusing in the client trying to vanish all the hurdles uh, for you the client, to buy your protection to buy insurance We are so we are epifying insurance, transforming insurance into an app. So this is the first thing. And because we transform the insurance into an app, um, the price of insurance drops because um, uh, by doing a distribution uh, through digital platforms, um, the, the commissions of the brokers are lower. Therefore, This difference is totally transferred to the client. So you can buy insurance cheaper than you supposed to buy nowadays. Um, also, uh, you could share this advantage with your friends and therefore you could be uh, a beneficiary of uh, sharing protections to others and receive progressive discounts in your insurance until you make it for free. And after you make it for free, you can receive money back. Because as you work, for example, for Uber, and, um, and you're sharing your ride, let's say, um, here you're sharing protection with others. And after you have your own insurance for free, you start to receive money back. And furthermore, um, when you um, uh, don't have a claim, after a period of time, a part of your premium will be destined to subsidize microinsurance. But we have the transparency of the blockchain, so you can see in real time the money that was in your policy that you paid as premium and were transferred to the uh, microinsurance policy protecting those who can protect themselves. So this is one, one aspect. The other aspect, uh, it is the collective intelligence. Uh, when we track, for example, your GPS, 
or your accelerometer, your gyroscope, um, your Wi-Fi antennas, GPRS antennas. The insurance um, now are, are talking about IoT telematics. So we are able to calculate, for example, uh, how do you accelerate, how do you brake, how do you corner, uh, how fast do you drive, and uh, by doing this um, uh, individual calculation, we can calculate your own risk in the individual basis. So you don't have to pay for bad drivers, for example, because nowadays insurance are calculated by averages. So let's say you have a, a sibling, and your sibling a Gemini, and um, one of you, it is very religious, very um, uh, correct person, and the other one is the crazy one in Carnival, let's say. But for the insurers, the price will be the same uh, because they are average on on they base on average by gender, by location. Um, <coughs> And therefore, they, they calculate the price like this. But when we calculate on individual basis, you would pay the right price, the fair price. Uh, okay, so uh, the blockchain the insurance businesses makes all the sense because of many different um, aspects. Let's say, for example, um, um, the regulator of insurance today. Um, the regulator, they will have the information about the solvency of the insurance company uh, six months after the, the finish of the fiscal year. So, uh, uh, with the blockchain, the client, not the regulator, the client would have the information in real time. So, the information is like the number of policies of the insurance company the solvency that they have to pay you back, the number of claims that the insurance company has, if this uh, above or below the average of the claims, if you compare with other insurers. Um, we also have, for example, differences when we um, compare the settlement of the insurance policy. Um, I was mentioning to you that the experience of buying insurance is horrible, and the experience of claiming an insurance, it's even worse. Because when you claim, the, the, the insurer would ask you thousands of documents. They would always find a small letters in your contract to do not pay you back. The insurer and uh, a legal form that nobody understands. And now with the blockchain, we have a binary relations, one and zeros. It's very simple. Uh, if you comply with the rules, the insurance will be paid automatically. And if you do not comply, it would not be paid. Simple as that. So, you won't have, for example, uh, arbitrage that I was mentioning. Uh, uh, when, you, um, when you file a claim, let's say that you crashed your car, um, you would, the, the insurance would delay uh, 40 to 6 days to pay you back. And uh, um, with the blockchain, this will be automatically settled. Uh, there is not um, not arbitrage uh, that the insurance, uh, they, they make money on your behalf in the moment of your pain. When you most need it, they are uh, investing your money and then delay the payment for you. Um, and uh, another point is um, conflict of interest at the end of the fiscal year when they try to guarantee their bonuses in the private jets instead of pay you back. So, blockchain uh, simply uh, uh, vanished this from the map. So that's why we use blockchain. It's more transparent, it's more efficient, um, and uh, it's more justice. Um, we select um, many different types of uh, blockchains, technologies. Um, we started using Ethereum, uh, that's the most common one everybody uses for doing a smart contract. Okay, so we have a huge cost of gas. So gas means the, the cost to um, register the policy in the blockchain. So it's quite expensive. 
when you're doing micro insurance, for example, that are very small transactions, uh, the cost of gas is higher than the cost of the policy itself. So it doesn't make sense. So uh, we tried, for example, to use um, RSK. And RSK, um, they, they use Bitcoin as a proof of work. Um, therefore, much more secure because of the proof of work. And um, we are also testing RSK um, for different types of insurance policies when we have a great amount, for example, then makes sense. Even though the cost uh, of register a policy is four times lower than Ethereum. Um, we tried um, a Hyperledger from IBM who invested 120k USDs in 88 InsurTech to create the insurance case and they are also providing us with Watson technology for AI and robotics and uh, we also um, um, use a node of R3 Corda because we are incubated inside Bradesco Bank which is the larger insurer in Latin America okay. um, so, so they just the Bradesco Bank they, they made uh, on 2017 um, about 54 billion dollars <laughs> so they are huge and um, and in my team I have one um, special guy let's say my chief blockchain officer uh, named Alex Brass and Alex it is a, an ambassador of NEN and therefore he mentioned to me we should try NEN because of the cost of register a policy, it would make much more sense when we are talking about micro insurance and protect those people who can protect themselves. I don't know if he mentioned to you, we were shortlisted by UNICEF. And we, we answer an RFP of UNICEF and they select us as one uh, blockchain startup who could actually bring social impact in global scale. I am a member myself of a Singularity University in Brazilian Hub, and from them I import the purpose of uh, create a social impact in one billion people. So uh, we also have a social cause behind it, and we were listed on the United Nations marketplace to be pushed by UNICEF worldwide and create this social impact. Okay, so for your Spanish speaker audience, um, uh, me voy a intentar hablar en español entonces. Uh, es un gusto, un placer muy grande hablar con ustedes, uh, mis hermanos latinoamericanos. Y voy a decir que uh, 88 va a expandir sus actividades para América Latina este año. Entonces, hasta el fin del año, espero estar con vosotros. Un gusto muy grande. Compartir y amor, compartir y protección, compartir y 88. Muchísimas gracias por habernos acompañado en esta emisión especial de Casos de Uso sobre 88i. Les invitamos a suscribirse a nuestro canal para que puedan enviarnos todos esos comentarios que nos ayudan a mejorar continuamente. Mi nombre es Alexis Trujillo y me despido de ustedes no solamente por este canal, sino también por nuestra emisión hermana de NEM Academia. Hasta siempre. Latinem, NEM Blockchain en español para ti.